Come on, let's give the Lord some praise. If you know there's something about the name of Jesus, if that name, just saying the name makes you feel better, can we call his name? Come on, call his name. What's his name? Call his name. Demons tremble at the name of if Jesus has made a way in your life, come on, give Jesus some praise. Oh, how I love Does anybody love him this afternoon? Come on, do you love him? It's sweeter than it's sweeter than the honeycomb. Come on. Worship Lord says something, 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 something. Something about the name Jesus. Has Jesus made a way for you? When you felt like throwing in the towel, he said, Hold on, my sister. I'm not done with you yet. I know. Say, Oh, how I love. Oh, how I love the Jesus. Thank you, Lord. the name of Jesus. Give God some praise in this house. Now we're going to, I got to be obedient and I want you all to know you biblical scholars, you biblical scholars, worship came before preaching. When God created the earth, there was no sin. So Adam and Eve, they worship God in the garden in the cool of the day. They worship God uninhibited and because of their worship, they had dominion. Say dominion. They named every animal. They had dominion over all the earth because something happens when you worship. But after sin came, then you need preaching. But I got to be obedient this afternoon. Some of y'all would get y'all's breakthrough, not if you heard a word, but if you just worship. Worship requires participation. See, see, some of y'all say, Pastor, preach the word. But the Lord says, why don't you worship? Because the word has already happened. You, you missed the word because he says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own standards. That's Proverbs 3 and 5. So I want you to know this afternoon that the Lord is in this room. And some of y'all are resisting. But the Lord said, if you get out of the way, and let God have God's way, then God would make a way. If you want to just worship the Lord, just come on, worship God right now. Come on, worship God. Tell him, I know. Minister to the Lord. If you could just focus on Jesus and not this sister, give God some praise right now. Come on, tell him, oh, tell him, Manya. There's power in your own. The Lord wants to heal you. I know you came for a baptism, but the Lord says, I'm going to make every rough place smooth and every crooked place straight. The Lord said, I heard you crying in the midnight hour. The Bible says, cry out to the Lord and I will show you great and mighty things you don't even know. Every tear you sown in sadness, the Lord said, you're going to reap songs of joy. It's something about worshiping the Lord. But when I think about worship, I'm reminded of our text today. And I think about God calling Samuel. First Samuel chapter three, verse one through 10. The, the Lord hadn't spoken for 400 years. And, and then the Lord said, I need a person to prophesy. So he, he calls Samuel. And when he calls Samuel, Samuel goes to Eli, who was a priest. And he says, Eli, did you call me? Eli said, no, I didn't call you. Go back to sleep. 
Then the second time he, he calls Samuel and Samuel goes back to Eli the priest and he goes and, and he says, did you call me? And I thought about this. If you want the Lord to do something in your life, sometimes you have to be obedient. Say be obedient. So he goes back to Eli. Eli was a priest. So Samuel goes back at 12 years old. The Lord is calling him. And Samuel realized if I'm going to be used by the Lord and hear from the Lord, I need to have seasoned people in my life. So if you want the Lord to speak in your life, you need somebody who has some wisdom in your life. Who's your Eli this afternoon? Who gives you advice? And if you're going to hear the Lord speak, you have to surround yourself with people of wisdom. That's why you need to get in a loop group because you can't do this journey by yourself, baby. See, if you get somebody, you can lean on that person when you get weak. But if there's nobody, you're going to lean and you're going to fall. Everybody needs an Eli. Now, the thing about this text, Eli was a priest to the people. Even though he prayed for the people, he had family problems at home. Anybody got any family problems? Come on, tell the truth, you church folk. Anybody dealing with some family problems right now? Come on, tell the truth, shame the devil. But he realized that God is not always concerned about if you have it all together, but he realized if it had not been for the Lord on your side, you wouldn't be here. So he saw something in Eli. So Eli gave him a word. So Samuel goes back to sleep. And on that third time, he called him. And he goes to Eli and, and, and he says, did you call me? Do you hear what I hear? He said, no, son, I don't hear. But let me tell you, whenever God calls you, nobody hears the calling but you. Y'all yeah. missed that. You missed that. God doesn't call your neighbor for your calling. When God calls you, nobody, your mama, your daddy, big mama, auntie, uncle Joe, they can't help you. But the calling is for you. So he goes back to sleep. But what happened, Betty Sims, what happened, he says, is this you, Lord? And some of you all right now, you are making deplorable decisions. You are making mistakes because you can't differentiate whose voice is talking. Here it is. He goes back the third time and, and he realized he had to understand, is it God talking? Is it the devil talking? Or is this me talking to me? But you will know when the Lord is talking. Because if you read your Bible, John 10, it says, my sheep know my voice. But when God speaks to you, you know that it's of the Lord. Well, let me go to John 10 and 10. He says, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and I'm glad you know your Bible. He says, but, say but. It's always a conjunction on your way to a blessing. But. Give God some praise for the butt. See, you got to go through something in order to get to the butt. And then there's a comma. The comma lets me know, y'all, it ain't over. Jesus says, but I came that you may have life and have it to the full more abundantly. So how do I know if it's God talking? But I'm going to tell you how you know if it ain't of God. If it's something trying to steal your peace, kill your hope, and rob your joy that ain't of God that's the devil lying to you but check this out some of y'all are on the verge of a breakthrough and the enemy says it's a breakdown but when God gives you a word and when you have peace that surpasses all understanding it's kind of like God said I told you what to do and everybody gonna think you're crazy but remember crazy Peter when the Lord called him he didn't call all the disciples he didn't call his neighbor he called Peter and said Peter come Peter got the boat and he started walking on water because he had peace and the Lord says even though this season may seem crazy I'm gonna give you peace to walk on things that try to walk all over you I'm gonna give you peace so if you're gonna hear from the voice of the Lord you have to learn how to sift sift through various voices surround yourself with people who have wisdom sift through various voices and the final thing I'm gonna get you out of the way so you can go to brunch I ready to go to brunch but feast on this last part of the word right here. So here we go, here we go, here we go. So when you want to hear the Lord speak, y'all have to catch this Garland First United Methodist. 
In order for the Lord to move, you have to be willing to pray bold prayers. Fourth time, he surrounded himself with, with people of wisdom. He sifted through those various voices. And then he finally had to do something different. He goes back and he, Eli said, oh, now I got it. It's the Lord calling this young whippersnapper. He said, now when you go back and lay down, say a bold prayer. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. See, right now where you are, some of y'all are right now at a place of indecisiveness. Some of y'all saying, should I stay or should I go? Should I leave this job or chill? But you have to get to a place where you can learn how to be still and know that God is God. And while you are being still, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Is there anybody here this afternoon ready to give a bold prayer to God? And regardless what the Lord says, you have to trust that God will never let you down. God will never leave you. God will never forsake you. If you say, speak, Lord, now my servant is listening. And this is the part right here I like. As my grandmother say, it gets gooder and gooder. God chose Samuel. Whenever there is a messy problem, God said, I need to use somebody who believe in miracles. His mama, Hannah, had a womb that was barren. It was shut up. People ridiculed her. They talked about her. And she went, read your Bible in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 17. The Bible says, where we started, where we go in. It says, she was tired of being ridiculed, Rick. And the Bible says she went to Eli, the priest, said, I know I'm barren, but I've been reading the text that says I'm blessed. So what happens is the verse 17 says, and she made up in her mind, Riley. She went in the tabernacle and she worshiped. She went in the tabernacle and she worshiped. Check this out. Y'all going to like this. You done because y'all going to like this. She was once barren. People talked about her. They laughed at her. And it was considered a curse or a stigma to be barren. And she goes into the house of the Lord. And what she thought in outside was a tomb. She came in the tabernacle and realized it was a womb. A womb is a place where miracles are manufactured in birth. Yeah, y'all missing that. Y'all missing that. Y'all. Let, let, let me say it real slow because I'm talking slower today. She went into the tabernacle and God said, I know your heart. Regardless what the world says, she began to worship and she went home and had Samuel. So here we are two chapters later. Chapter three. He knew that if you did it for my mama, because the Bible says, if you let me have this baby, I'm going to give him back to you. And when you've been praying for a blessing, you ask God for that raise. I would tithe better. If God gave you promotion, give it back to the Lord because the Lord gives and the Lord will. She gave her best back to the Lord. And he goes for the Lord and he says, speak, Lord, for your servant listening. And after that, y'all, Things change. Let me tell you this. And I'm going to close. When you begin to pray that bold prayer, God will change the very trajectory of your life. When you thought doors were closed, when you say, speak, Lord, God say, I will open up doors. When you go to try to get that car and your credit score is, is a little lower than the Mississippi, you, you say, God, you know what? I'm working on my credit, but you are a credit repairer. So when you show up for that job interview, knowing that you're not qualified, but I am qualified and God speak, Lord.
Lord, for your servant is listening. Some of y'all have an interview tomorrow, and your one bold prayer better be speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Some of y'all's money is funny, and your change is strange. You got to rob Peter to pay Paul. Don't look at your Chase bank account. You better look to the heavens and what come at your help and say, speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Is there anybody here this afternoon willing to pray a bold prayer and know that when you cry out to the Lord, God say, I will show you great and mighty things that you don't even know. If you know that the Lord is about to do something right now, give the Lord some praise in this house. And I, don't leave me. Stay right there. See, some of y'all right now, you got so much noise going on in your life and you can't even hear from the Lord. And you got voices, not just of the enemy or not just of you, but you got voices of guilt. You got voices of resentment. Some of y'all have voices of unforgiveness right now. And you want to go to another level. Today, you have to learn how to release some stuff. See, there is a dam that's blocking you from getting to your destiny. And shame on you if God has shown you that demon and you're going to let that demon rob you of your joy, take you your peace, and kill your hope. I double dog dare you right now to speak to that demon that's been holding you back, that demon of guilt. But God says, by his stripes, you're set free. That demon of unforgiving, he said, the same way I forgave you, you have to forgive the next person. He said, you have to forgive seven times 70. And there's somebody here that you have to understand that even when you don't thank you enough, the Bible says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. So this place is called St. Luke. This is a place of healing. Luke was a physician. He healed people. So every time you come into this house, you should expect to be healed, mind, body, soul, and spirit. When you come to church, come in and say, speak, Lord, for your servants are. Oh, listen, I came in one way, but I'm going to leave a different way. I came here with a frown, but I'm going to leave with a smile because I know that the joy of the Lord is my strength. I came in one way, but I'm going to leave a different way. Is there anybody here this afternoon as I close my last close? You want to see God move? Pray a bold prayer. Not that now nah, I lay me down asleep. I pray the Lord. That's, that's cute prayer. And the enemy laughs at that. Pray God's word. And God has to move on God's word. God's name is on the line. When you pray in Jesus' name, he says, you know what? I will answer in due season. I may not come when you want me, but you're going to want me when I come. God says that delayed prayer is not a denied prayer. The reason why the prayer hadn't answered, because you're not ready. But while you're waiting, won't you worship? We're in overtime now. While you're waiting on your blessing, stop worrying and gossiping and start worshiping. While you're waiting for the breakthrough, I thank you that you are the God of the breakthrough. You are the God who's Alpha and Omega. You're the God of the beginning and you're the God of the end. But I'm so glad he's also the God of the in-between. And I'm reminded when they were in Egypt, he said, I know you got Pharaoh's army behind you. That's called student loans. And you got the Red Sea in front of you. That's called mortgage. But we serve a God who still can part Red Seas. Have you tried him? Do you not know who he is? Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. Who is the king of glory? The Lord mighty in battle. God still can part Red Seas. And you're waiting for God to move. God says, when you move, I move. Just like that. If you take one step, see, the Red Sea didn't part until they moved. Some of y'all sitting down and talking about you trusting the Lord, having that spiritual navel gazing and pontificating. God said, I don't care how much you know if you know how much I care for you. St. Luke, we got to move gotta move 
We've been in this space long enough and people want to connect with us to a God who still performs miracles, a God who still is part Red Sea, a God who still can heal cancer, a God who still can heal somebody from crack cocaine, a God who still, because the Bible says, by his stripes, I'm healed. So today, there's somebody in this space, you felt like giving up. Somebody's dealing with the drug addiction today. And we got our little church clothes on, got our little robes on. But you know, you toe up from the floor up. Like Roberta Flack is just killing you softly. God said, I know what you need. But there's healing at the altar. There's deliverance at the altar. And what I like about this, when you get in God's presence, everything changes. So today, as you stand to your feet, I don't know who the Lord is speaking to, but do you hear what I hear? You have to let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. You have to speak call those things that be not as old they already are. Don't look at the circumstance. Don't tell God about your circumstances, but tell your circumstances about your God. My God still moves mountains. Clap your hand for the mountain, and he's going to give you the strength to go over the mountain. God says, whatever you need, ask and it shall be given. In Jesus' name, not Bowie's name or High Tower or Ben's name, Jesus' name. So hear me, whatever you need from the Lord, even the village who came for baptism, it's not by happenstance or accidents you're here, but it's by, by divine providence that you came today. And you've been wrestling with stuff all week long, but the Lord says in Matthew 11 and 28, cast your cares upon me, for I care for you, says the Lord. You've been carrying all this stuff by yourself. And when you carry it by yourself, you saying, I didn't hang long enough. When you carry all this, you saying, Jesus, you didn't take enough crown of thorns in your head. As long as you keep holding on unforgiving, you saying, you didn't get pierced in your side enough. So today is your day. If you're ready for God to break through in your life, some of y'all need Ambien and alcohol to go to sleep. And there's somebody here today, as the pastors are here, we want to pray for you. We want you to be.